the pig, the bullocks, the sheep, the pony and the nanny goat. At that moment, George's mother came back from shop in the village. She drove her car into the yard and got out. She was carrying a bottle of milk in one hand and a bag of groceries in the other. The first thing she saw was a gigantic brown hen towering over little George. She dropped the bottle of milk. Then Grandma started shouting at her from the rooftop. And when she looked up and saw Grandma's head sticking through the tiles, she dropped the bag of groceries. How about that then, eh, Mary? Grandma shouted. I bet you've never seen a head as big as that. That's George's giant hen, that is. But, 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 stammered George's mother. It's George's magic medicine, Grandma shouted. We've both had it. The hen and I. But how in the world did you get up on the roof? Cried his mother. I didn't, cackled the old woman. My feet are still standing downstairs in the living room. This was too much for George's mother to understand. She just goggled and gaped. She looked as though she was going to faint. A second later, George's father appeared. His name was Mr Kiri Cranky. Mr Cranky was a small man with bandy legs and a huge head. He was a kind father to George, but he was not an easy person to live with because even the smallest things got him all worked up and excited. The hen standing in the yard was certainly not a small thing, and when Mr Cranky saw it, it started jumping about as though something was burning his feet. Great heavens! he cried, waving his arms. What's this? What happened? Where did it come from? It's a giant hen! Who did it? I did, George said. Look at me! Grandma shouted from the rooftop. Never mind about the hen. What about me? Mr Cranky looked up and saw Grandma. Shut up, Grandma, he said. It didn't seem to surprise him that the old girl was sticking her head up through the roof. It was the hen that excited him. He had never seen anything like it. But then, who had? It's fantastic, Mr Clanky shouted, dancing round and round. It's colossal, it's majestic. How on earth did you manage it, George? George started telling his father about the magic medicine. While he was doing this, the big brown hen sat down in the middle of the yard and went, cluck, 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 cluck. Everyone stared at him. When it stood up, there was a brown egg lying there. The egg was the size of a football. Egg would make scrambled eggs for 20 people, Mrs Cranky said. George, Mr Cranky shouted, how much more of this medicine have you got? Lots, George said. There's a big saucepan full in the kitchen and this bottle's nearly full. Come with me, Mr Cranky yelled, grabbing George by the arm. Bring the medicine. For years and years I've been trying to breed bigger and bigger and bigger animals. Bigger bulls for beef, bigger pigs for pork, bigger sheep for mutton. They went to the pigsty first. George gave a spoonful of medicine to the pig. The pig blew smoke from its nose and jumped about all over the place. Then it grew and grew. They went to the herd of fine bullocks that Mr Cranky was trying to fatten for the market. George gave each of them some of the medicine. This is what happened. Then the sheep. He gave some to his grey pony, Jack Frost. And finally, for fun, he gave some to Alma, the nanny goat. Here's Jack Frost and Alma, the nanny goat. Who ended up almost eating the farmyard. Let's see what happens next. How are they going to get Grandma out of the roof?